G'day YouTubers, Nervous Neuron here. This is basically a video response for Nathan Hazlitt. Uh, I started typing out like a verbal response, but what I was writing was getting too long. So I thought, meh, I might as well make a bloody video response. For those of you who aren't in the know, delayed sleep phase syndrome is a circadian rhythm sleep disorder. Basically what that means is that our sleep timing is affected. So um, in the case of delayed sleep phase syndrome, it's delayed. So the normal bedtime for people is roughly 12 midnight and they wake up 8 uh, a.m. in the morning. So that's about the average. That gets about 8 hours sleep a night. Um, of course, there's plenty of you guys going to be like, oh no, I go to bed 1 o'clock, I go to bed 2 o'clock, or no, I need to go 10, whatever. There's like some natural variation. Not everybody's the average. But the late sleep phase syndrome is when it gets really serious, when we're um, deviating from the normal quite a bit. For example, my bedtime is 4 a.m. and my get up time is around like 12, 1 o'clock if I'm allowed to. Unfortunately, I'm not. Now, this can actually appear like insomnia because people can't fall asleep at night, but it's not because if allowed, they can actually sleep through the morning and onto the afternoon. Um, the severity of the syndrome is basically uh, how inflexible it is and also how delayed it is. For example, 2am might be considered normal night owl hours, whereas 4am gets a bit more serious. Uh, some people might go 6am in the morning to bed or something like that. Our circadian rhythms are entrained around a 24 hour period by a various number of zeitgeepers. keepers. That um, basically means timekeepers such as light for example you you're awake in the day you sleep at night if you um, go to another country another time zone you might experience jet lag but eventually your circadian, your circadian rhythm will put you back into waking up at morning and going to bed in the evening there are many different kinds of circadian rhythm disorders such as advanced sleep phase disorder or non-24 or some people have irregular sleeping hours where it's just all over the place but I won't really go into this too much because this is just a quick a quick reply to Nathan the Wikipedia articles are pretty good um, I might make a longer video if I can be bothered about it but uh, Nathan now he mentioned that just get up or go to bed earlier uh, doesn't work for him and that's true and this is the kind of useless advice that we get from people. You know, if you can't fall asleep until 4am, just go to bed earlier. Or just get up. Yeah, I've done this for work. It takes a few alarm clocks. I've got my phone. Um, and it's actually got a puzzle lock. Because what happens is the phone is really easy to press stop instead of snooze. Uh, so I have to puzzle lock it to turn it off. Then um, I've got another alarm clock, so my phone alarm clock will come on twice. And if I've got desperate, um, I use a physical, a non-phone alarm clock that I have to actually get up and turn off. Then I'll wake up for work. Because I will be sleep deprived, because I'll have to get up for work, say 7, 8 a.m., gone to sleep 4, I've had like 3, 4 hours sleep. Even after several hours of sleep deprivation because of work, I still can't fall asleep at night. No, I'm still lying there until 4am. I'm tired as hell. I'm, I'm going like manic as well because my I've got like racing thoughts and all that. But I'm tired and I just can't sleep. You know what, maybe I will go to sleep earlier, like 3am or something. <laughs> so maybe the crappy advice helps a little bit. The thing with this syndrome or disorder is that it's not really a disorder. Because if we get our eight hours sleep, or you know, everyone has different hours of sleep that we need, we're fine. But because the majority of people have a 12 to 8 um, sleeping hours, we're the abnormal ones and we have to bend over for everybody else because we're abnormal. So this makes it a social disability. For example, if I'm up at night, like right now, I have to be quiet to avoid waking everybody else up. 
but then when I'm sleeping um, late morning, early afternoon, they don't have to be quiet. They can wake me up all they want because I'm the abnormal one. Yeah, like, and at work, it's fine for them to put nine o'clock meetings on for us to go to, but what about if I organise the meetings and put one 1 a.m.? How would they like it? Oh, oh, the chaos. And having said all that, uh, we are becoming more of a 24 hours society so it is getting better so we're not just tethered down to the nine to five business hours because that's so frustrating but still it makes it very difficult to do things like go to the dentist go to the doctor go to the post office go to the bank do all these things uh, because you know they shut at bloody five o'clock in my opinion the best thing for DSPS is to just stick with your rhythm. On the Wikipedia I read that in America it's considered a disability that work should basically work around because a disability is defined as something that impacts a major uh, life activity and sleep's a major life activity and you can't sleep, that's a disability. And the only thing they need to do is change your working hours where possible. I mean, it kind of annoys me. There's wheelchair access everything at my work. I haven't seen a single person in a wheelchair yet. I can't. I can't come in late. But um, yeah, I was speaking in first person there. That doesn't necessarily apply to me. I've been quite lucky and unlucky. I mean, I have to work around the mice circadian rhythm, so I just can't come in any time I like. And unfortunately, many jobs are social. Uh, you have to work together with people, and you've got, you know, ten people with one sleeping pattern and then the odd one out. Well, it's us, the odd one out, that has to kind of bend over and go with everybody else. What is helpful is educating people. I give examples like... Imagine you were jet lagged every day, how would you feel about that? Or how would you like to do night shift right now? I do get a lot of empathy from people who do night shift work, which is good. Unfortunately, the difficult people will be your superiors. These are your parents, teachers at school, boss at work, whatever. These people uh, sort of, even subconsciously, tend to think they know more than you do don't mind me, they're not all like that. But the hardest thing in a case like that is to actually approach them and get the discussion flowing. Because often, you know, you might quickly explain your problem, but then they'll give an alter they'll give their um, feedback or their, their helpful advice or something like that. And it's difficult to keep arguing and explaining and trying to change their mind. Often these people have never heard of delayed sleep phase syndrome and you know when you explain it to them they're like this is not a disease. That's that's you know and then they start to just you know go to bed early. The problem I think comes is when people try to empathize the wrong kind of way like a lot of people night owls for example you know, prefer to stay up late and have a little sleep in. And that's what they think I'm doing, you know, that I'm, I'm wanting a little sleep in and, you know, I have to, have to be responsible and get up on time. So these, these people will often give you those sleep hygiene tips, like go to bed on time, don't drink caffeine, don't be on the computer, don't have a life. <sighs> but they give this advice because they don't know what they're on about. <laughs> um, and the, part of the problem is you have to really explain for yourself. For example, if you're up at night and whoever you're living with, your parents, whatever, come up and it's four o'clock and they're like, why are you still up? And your reply is, not tired. And then that, that response gets you the wrong kind of advice. I basically compare it to night shift work. Um, I explained that it's not natural for most people to be sleeping during the day and it's very difficult. It is possible with an extreme amount of discipline to actually change our rhythm and it depends on the severity of the, the disorder. Some people it's very inflexible and it's difficult. Some people after a couple of weeks of imposing strict bedtimes of 12 to 8 they can get some um, 
help with it. Same sort of applies to night shift workers. Some take to it alright, some people just can't cope whatsoever. When I've experienced problems at work, it's because I've rocked up sleep deprived and I don't explain to people what's going on. Sleep deprivation itself causes a lot of problems at work. I believe dealing with DSPS is all about compromise. There's a certain amount of flexibility in our systems, but not a lot. I mean, you can give the proper bedtimes and sleep hygiene thing a go. Anything else, like um, sleeping tablets as well, those things can change your rhythm to normal waking hours. But it's difficult to maintain them. For example, a clinical trial where they used melatonin, I think, I can't remember the stats, but it was above 90% said they found it helpful. Of course, that doesn't mean they recovered from it. But what was also interesting is, I think it was above 95% or above 90 I can't remember, um, after a year, went back to their old sleeping habits. That's what I've, I've had many experiences where I've managed to put my rhythm into the normal waking hours but it just slowly slips back. It's really difficult to maintain. You know, one night you go out and party, it can be all over. Now how I actually did that, that's a story for another video, I think. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, Nathan, for making the video. See yous.